have this patently fall of economic paradigm, you know, where we are valuing, valuing the money from an artificial level and not really looking at the life, you know, and this is one of the reasons why, you know, in this post-traumatic slave disorder, it's hard for us to invest. Not just hard, but we don't see it as a logical, a logical reality. And we're still in, we're still in Exodus. We're still in, in, in Torah. You know, in the Torah, we still are in this fourteenth Torah, in the lunar and the solar. The lunar and solar connection, as we touched on and alluded to before, is very significant and it's very important. But what we want to do right here as we inspire and we try to move on the inspiration. You know, sometimes we're meditating and reading and taking care of other works within the ministry, as well as seeking to build up the host. Build up the host. The word host is a very interesting word, the word host. When we look at how that word host is used in its various usages. But what about in a sense biblically? Because we're at a point in the Bible where we're going to hear how Israel is is the host of the Lord and Israel becomes the armies of the Lord and the ministers of the Lord. But first we have to get out of Egypt. And now what exactly occurred and happened in Egypt? Another video, there's some videos that we have available and videos that are out there that we want to suggest that ones as possible. Either check it out on the internet Sometimes you can see the whole thing just to get an idea of it. And if you want to get a copy of it, we have it. Other people have it. You can get a copy of it. Um, it's the one of James Cameron. James Cameron. Oh, Exodus Decoded. That was the name of it. Exodus Decoded. Um, it's a very interesting production. And we want to do a little bit of a critique on that. Um, we agree with certain information being accurate while there are other layers and areas of information that are not as accurate and we'll give the reasons why but since this 14th Torah portion also and mainly contains the plagues the plagues on Egypt now we've already identified and in the previous vid I've actually touched on some of the evidence we documented documenting that the lost sheep, according to all the points, it's like when they're doing a fingerprint analysis, and they say that it has um, six points, eight points, nine points, and, and there's a certain amount of, of, of points that line up that prove that more likely, based on the evidence, that this is so. So when we look at that same evidence to determine, well, who is the lost sheep of the house? It's Raya. We find that only um, so-called black folks or Negroes, niggers, fulfill the bill. Only we really fulfill that bill of the Lord Sheep of the Beta Israel. And there's no racism. People say, you know, oh, this is just black people, you know, um, saying that they are this. No, this is our experience. You see what I'm saying? This is our experience. And they say that he who what? He who feels it knows it. And everybody else, I add, can just uh, believe or be lie even if they please. So let us continue with this portion here. Um, now we're in the 14th. This, these notes here, of course, have been up here since the 13th, and we posted a couple of vids, you know, touching on this area of um, 13th, uh, the 13th Shimo. So what we want to do now, and we're using this as a reference right here, based on some of the Wikipedia and the other online information, a compilation, so that we can have a reference point for the studies. We also want to um, share with ones that we're seeking to establish, uh, establish this more real, in the sense of, of, of live, for lack of a better word, libraries or, or bookstores and other, other opportunities for the dissemination of information.
but we recognize that books and knowledge and inf my people died because of a lack of what? A lack of knowledge. Christ says, what ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Therefore, knowledge or education is the key. And in following in the, in the way and in the illumination of the great illuminator for I and I, Ketamar, we highlight the line saying, the Lineage Society is going to initiate um, a, a schools, uh, libraries, and bookstores investment, both from, from here, from where we're at, because we have to begin to educate ourselves right here while we have, the, while there is time, you know what I'm saying, before it is too late. Now, people say, well, 2012 is right here, but, but no one knows the day or the hour, so we must begin to get prepared, and we must become mature. We must grow up. As it says, the solid foods belong to those who are mature. You understand? But milk, the basic teaching now is what helps us now harden our structure. Just like with a baby, the baby has the mother's milk because it can't manufacture its own proteins. And then its structure, the bone structure, begins to become more developed. And in the same, in the same way, it is for I and I. Once we recognize who we are and we make proactively, we have to be proactive about this. This is why the Exodus teaching is so very important. Now, what we want to do moreover is let's move on to this uh, reading and feeding that is called Vayera. 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 So we're going to remove this right here. So we're in the names. Now, the name, the name is very, is very significant, the name. So we're not at the 13th anymore, but we're at the 14th Deraja, the 14th degree, or the 14th level, the 14th uh, sabbatical portion, reading, reading, and, and feeding, all right? So let us move forward. Now, we already want you to know that this is the 14th right here. And the 14th is known as by era. You understand? Or literally, in the Hebrew, if you put the Hebrew, it's Wa, right? Wa. Then we have the the A. Uh, and I know I'm using the, the Ethiopic, but the Ethiopic and the Hebrew is basically, when you look at it in the structure, one and the same. Wa, A. Uh, then we have the Ra. Uh, and then I'll give you the the more conventional way of somebody in the Hebrew. Basically, it's the same. It's the same letter because the root is the Ethiopic. So basically, what we have is W A R A. Now, in the previous video, we broke down the fact that this comes from the Ethiopic, and the Ethiopic or the the Arai. So we was talking about the vision. Right, the vision, right, which is the Rai. Now, what's interesting is that the Book of Revelation, right, the Book of Revelation is what we know in the Ethiopic, right, Revelation equals the Rai, or more correctly, or simply, it's the vision. Because the scripture teaches us that my people perish, my people perish because of a lack of of vision. If we think about what is our vision right now as a people, what vision, what vision do we have of the promised land? What vision do we have of our own lives, our own future? What is that vision? And we are in a passive state, but we must become more active. But that all depends on our wills, on making our wills obedient to good influences. If we are making our wills obedient to good influences, and we're studying to show ourselves approved, then we're also noticing that our vision is becoming clearer. We begin to see who we are, where we're at, where we're going, and now we have to deal with how do we get there. And preparation is the key. We once again um, uh, make a shout out, in a sense, to um, the, the subscriber on our channel, The Heights. 
who in response to that Nas and that uh, Farrell, Farrell, Farrell video had pointed out that Bob Marley told us to go to Africa or to the Promised Land, Allah Selassie, Jesus Christ, and that there is no Savior, you know what I'm saying, that's going to come in that sense and just take away everything and make us all feel high because we, we are without a vision and we're without that, that, that knowledge. Therefore, what we're living in right now is the spiritual Egypt. And in the spiritual Egypt, we're under heavy afflictions, which day by day, whether we call them economic, social affliction. I caught an article the other day, um, and it was on letting Black Puff, one of the blogs out there, Black Puff. And um, the ministry, I think, subscribes to it, so we get regular updates so far and so on. And it's interesting, different perspectives of the black situation. And it spoke about how 70,000, right, in over a 10-year period of time, 70,000 African Americans, and, and probably majority males, but African Americans have been killed by the African Americans. So the writer of the article, I think, uh, Sister Alberta, if I'm correct, she said, um, or part of the title of the article, set up of the article was like, are we doing the work of the Klan? Are, are we doing, are black people basically doing what the Klan and slick woolly lynchism and white supremacy, are we doing their job for them? And if we look at um, Wooly Lynch, if we look at the slick woolly lynch uh, papers, one thing we will clearly see and notice within the Wooly Lynch papers is that they wanted to create a scenario that we as lost sheep would continue and, and repeat. We'll continue and it was like a, 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 a almost like a rat trap. You know what I mean? That we will be in the rat race. That we will continue this and this is where we're at, at as a people overall. Even though I know many of the brothers and sisters and others that subscribe to these vids as well as others out there are trying to find, well, how do we come out of Babylon? And the first level that we have to come out of Babylon is spiritually, is in our, is our mind. Our hearts and our minds have to um, undock, in a sense, with Babylon. You know, have to dislodge, in a sense, from Babylon. That's what Christ, the black Messiah, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Hamoshia, he says to be in the world, we're to be in the world, but not of the world. You can, we're to have his words abide in us, and as his words abide firmly in us, we become his dekamizamorit, or we become his disciples. You understand? This is discipleship. We're speaking about discipleship. So I want to show ones how all of these um, various elements, if we would study and get a, a maturity in the teaching, we'll see how it all comes together, and it all comes together and it forms an alternative system to the Babylonian system. So the teaching, the feedings, is actually building in ourselves the ra'i, is building in ourselves the vision. Now, in the previous video, for this 14th uh, Sabbatical, um, we show some of the word picture, word art, as well as some of the Bible, um, the Bible study software, you know, to show one, well, this is the scripture, this is how one way of doing one study and going into the roots and making the connection. So what we made a connection is in the Ethiopic calendar to the eve of this 14th Shabbat this 14th Sabbath. Now, Vayera or Wayera, what does it mean? Wayera, what does it mean? Now, see, I'm asking these questions because as we come together, as we study together, we're studying together through these electronic means. So it's more like independent studies. So one has to take that personal responsibility. But it's just like if we were in a classroom or, or in a, a, a uh, yeah, a, a classroom study format. You know, it was like in school or in university or college, and I'm the lecturer, and I ask, well, what does Vayera mean? Now, if you've seen the video before, 
you should be able to tell me right now what it means, or really tell yourself what does it mean. And if we're not able to consolidate, you know, this knowledge, if it doesn't have, if we're not learning it by heart, you know, they say learn something by heart, in a sense is to memorize it, then it puts more of a challenge and also, in some sense, an impossibility for us to the Holy Spirit because we, we have not invested. So we're talking about investing, investing in Africa, investing in partnerships. But the reason why these investments have not been done is because people's spirit, our spirit, is not right with the Almighty. We have not repented. We have not begun to think differently. We have not really begun to have a change of mind. We have not made our wills obedient. We're curious. You understand? We want to know about it. We're interested in it. But now that we're learning what we're learning, are we like those whom, I think Timothy said, forever learning, but never able to come to the what? Acknowledgement. To act on what you know. Are we really acting on what we know? And then we have to ask, well, what is it that we know? Do we really know what we know? Or are we saying we understand, but we barely understand? See, it begins off that honesty. We have to... Above, Shakespeare says this. Shakespeare says, um, above all else, be true to thine own self. Right? And in a sense, it's like know thyself is true here. Even though Shakespeare or whatever like that, whatever you think about Shakespeare, Still, the truth is the truth is the truth is the truth. Above all else, one must be honest with oneself. Do you know this? Are you really interested in it? Or what do you need to know? Or what do you need to check out? What do you need to clarify first? You see, it's like um, in discipleship, Christ says, follow me. And others say, well, I had this to do. I got that. Do you have other priorities? So maybe you need to work out those those other priorities, or at least recognize that you have those either other priorities, preoccupation, or be set by other things, and to bring that before God in Christ in prayer, to pray on, say, Father, you know, I want to do this, but you see my situation, and develop that prayer life. See, this is the key to coming out of spiritual Egypt and Babylon, because of all that we know and all that has been known, we go, we went back over more than you know, 40, almost 400 years of information within these teachings, within the thousand or so plus videos. We touched on over, over thousands of years of information, but in particular over the past 40 years of information. A lot of these things that we're bringing to light again have already been known. And, and, and they said the best way to hide something, if you don't want somebody to know about it, but we say the best way to keep something from a nigga, you understand, is to put it in the book. You understand the best way to hide something, and this is one reason why we focus first and foremost on the book printing, the different publications, because we have grown at least to the extent to recognize the importance, you understand, of knowledge and of education. You know what I mean? And we hope that you also are investing in your future. The first investment in your future is to get informed even before getting involved. I mean, if you're going to get involved in something because you got good, good feelings, then you're still a little bit immature. Get to know a little bit more. Get more information. Get more 411 about it. This is why we focus on these teachings. Because some say, well, why don't you just go to Africa instead of all this talk, so forth and so on. Well, first of all, we could go to Africa, you understand, and we intend to, y'all yeah, willing. You understand? But are you in spirit, are, are you like they say, uh, you take the nigga out the ghetto, but can't take the nigga, take the nigga out the ghetto, but you can't take the um, um, ghetto out of the nigga? Are you still so plugged in? And unfortunately, people want to act like they're not plugged in and they're not being honest before the Holy Spirit that we all have, in a sense, been sold under hot eye, under sin. You know, we're all in this confusion, in a sense, together. That your sin may be one thing, your shortcoming may be one thing, mine may be another, but before the Father, we are all not, not clean. So let's first of all get clean. Let's clean up our hearts and our minds first by acknowledging all the dirt. So when we talk about what's going on in the world and these Illuminati videos and other stuff that's going on, this is not to scare folks. Because some folks will recognize, we recognize are being just 
scared, scared by all of this, like the Nas and the rest of them saying, yeah, man, it's difficult, because maybe they don't have that information. Maybe they have not, and most of them don't. I mean, yeah, they're celebrities, they're out there, so forth and so on, but what about you? What about I? What about I and I? So, as Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord God of Israel. Y'all can do whatever y'all want to do, but if y'all want to serve too, first of all, learn what is pleasing. Learn his way. Learn his way. And let's get in conformity with his will. So now, just to complete this right here, just connect this a little bit more. So we find that Rai for the, in the Ethiopic schedule, in the Ethiopic cannot put Tadel on the calendar. And this year is actually, um, let's put this right here, is this might confuse someone that we put 2004, because people are say we're in 2012. That means that you're in the wrong time. You're in a twilight zone of time to recognize exactly what year this is for. They say 2012, but that's in the Western calculation of time. If you check out the calendar, you'll recognize they've taken days and other things out of the calendar. So what is the right timing? In other words, a lot of people look at 2012 to be it. It's the end. No, it's the beginning of the end, there's still, there is still more tribulation to come. And are we prepared in spirit? Are we prepared psychologically in soul? See, if we're prepared in spirit, in heart, and in mind, then it's easy, easier, should we say, to get our body or the physical things. It's like if we are spiritually in heart and mind, brothers and sisters, then it's not a problem for us to get our physical resources together to do whatever we pray on or whatever we will that's pleasing to the God and Father of our Black One and Savior, Jesus Christus, and Shua Hamashiach. You see, but if we're not all divided and mixed up moods and attitudes and a bunch of pretensions, that's where we're at right now in this spiritual um, Egypt. So, according to the Ethiopic calendar, they call this us, us, um, as yo, right? As yo, as yo, as yo, as yo, as yo, right? And it connects with this right here. Um, Vayera, Vayera, um, Exodus chapter six, verses um two and three, mainly verse three, where it says, this is to say in and uh, he, right, appeared. This is what this means, and he appeared. So now, in the Alpha calendar, the Aster Yo is connected with the Timk as of the Ethiopian eunuch, and then that's the that's the twenty um, that's the twenty I think it's the twentieth, and then um, for the twenty first day, which is with the, with the Shabbat was this particular um, Shabbat, it was the marriage um, at Cana, or Cana of Galilee, Cana ze Galila, where Jesus Christos, where he turns water into wine, water into wine. Now remember, we're in the portion of the plagues, and the portion of the plagues, there is the blood, the, Na the Nile River being turned into blood. So if you look at both the New Testament, right, and the Old Testament, in the light of the scriptures, you see that there is a code here. There's a code in the Hebraic. You understand? There's a code in the Ethiopic. And even in the story of Exodus Old Testament and the Moshiach in the New Testament, and us in this time of revelation, that's the key right there. So this is Asterio, right? And he appeared. So we have Vaira. Waira and he appeared. Astes, Asterio, and he appeared. We have the Rai and the vision. We have the New Testament book of Revelation. And this is what we learn about the spiritual Egypt. This is where spiritual Egypt is pointed out, saying that they will be in a place which spiritually is called Sodom, Sodom, and Egypt. So we're in not just a spiritual Egypt, but also a spiritual Sodom. Now, I think this is a, a, a key. In the video that we pointed out, we pointed out the History Channel video, um, 
Exodus Decode to check it out. We're going to try to do an annotation to that video. Because there's some parts of the video where they really do bring to light some accurate and um, um, workable information, some information that they, they, they bring forward there, we find to be true and exact and also helps us to prove, you understand, um, the Beta Israel, the Ethiopian Hebrews, the Ethiopia connection with us as the lost sheep and all of that in the Bible. There's other areas where they put out, it's a little bit deceptive. They put some things out and they give it a false connotation. You want to clarify that. But when it's speaking about what happened and when it happened through all their research, they're coming very close to exactly what we have found in our Ethiopic reconstruction. So we think it's very good and timely for us to make that connection so one can recognize that the Exodus is not just a myth. There is a mythological structure to it. In other words, it's a parable. Yeah, you can put the realest things in life into a parabolic, you know, like you could write, you could rhyme about anything. So you could put anything into a rhyme or into a story. Now, it's whether the story really happened or whether it didn't really happen. This story really happened so much so that it's going to happen again. Now, we can be on board with that or we can be off board with that. We can be up with that or we can be down with Babylon. The decision is all ours. The first thing is to become informed and then to get involved, to become informed and to get involved. So we're going over this, again, just the name, just this first distinctive word, because we want to show you how important in our sabbatical and Sabbath readings and seedings, the story is important, but even the key word is important, because now Vamarinya, it is Tagaletuhu. Tagaletuhu. Tagaletuhu means and I appeared. Now, here is, and he appeared, but, and I appeared from what Yahweh says. He says, and, and I appeared, you know, to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. There is the Trinity. There he is the one of the three, and the three are in the one. So his Trinity is in unity, and his unity is in Trinity, which is the true Ethiopic Orthodox, or the Tawahido. Um, Ritit Amin, the Ritua Hymenot, the correct faith. In other words, it's the correct interpretation and digestion of the Word becoming flesh. In other words, the Word becoming a manifest reality. So the Word for us is a manifest destiny. But if we want to benefit from this, we need to know it. We need to live it. But before we can live it, we have to learn about it. So I just want to re-emphasize the importance of learning. Some, some say we should just do, 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 do. But there's too much do, do. You understand? That's the problem. There's too much do, do. Everybody's doing something, but it's like, it's like shit. It's like Scotos. You know, you know what I mean? It's like Skabalian. Look that one up. Skabalian. I think it's the word in the scripture that basically says do, do. You, you know what I mean? It's do, 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 do. We, we, we're doing all this. You understand? But we're not building anything. Because it's 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 not in the word. It's not it's not in a structure. It's not based on anything that is real and true. And that's the confusion, the spiritual Sodom and the spiritual Egypt as well. So we're updating ones on this right here. Let's just go here for a moment to uh, Exodus chapter Exodus chapter six. So two videos. There's two videos. I think one that we have, one we might not have right now, but it's out there. They had a video on, um, I think it was on History Channel, Lost World, and it was on Atlantis. And they played this around the same time as they played um, um, James Cameron. Remember James Cameron? He did the Avatar movie. But before he did the Avatar movie, he had did this with, uh, forgot the the Jewish, the European Jewish guy, but he does a pretty decent job in it, and it's called Exodus Decoded. Now, it's interesting now when we look at this, because Sodom and Egypt are pointed out in the book of Yehohannes Arai. Now, Yehohannes, we didn't touch on Yohannes, 
because the book is known as Nea Johannes. Johannes is John. But John, what does John mean? That's the question. What does John mean? So if you're taking notes, write down what does John mean? Because it's important to, to understand what's the meaning of the name. The name also has a key. Everything in the scripture is a code. And you can't just say, I know what the story is about, you know, but maybe why the story doesn't come together in your heart and your mind because there's something missing. You know, there's still something missing. You're missing one of the one of the keys. And the key to the book of Revelation is the fact that it's Ye Johannes Rai, the translatable, the revelation of John or Saint John, but Johannes means the grace of Yah. The grace of Yah. I want you to make a note that the grace of Jah. Johannes means the grace of Jah. So the book of Revelations is actually a grace. The book of Revelations is actually a grace and it's a revelation for us and to us. Notice what it says in 6 and 3 of Exodus. It says, and I appeared. Rather, let's just do this. Let's he. Let's put I. I. I think the Jews had that wrong. The Spirit just enlightened me about that. They had that wrong right there, but be that as it may, give thanks to the Holy Spirit for showing that to us. And I appeared. And I appeared like that. Eh, yeah. Eh, yeah. You understand? Remember the word is re, re, re in the Hebrew. But it's ah, re, or eh, re. So it's like eh, yeah. Eh, yeah. You take off the eh, you have yeah or ya. So, so eh, yeah, shara, eh, yeah, I am that I am. But then when Moses said it, he had to say, not that I am God, but that he is who he is, or Yahweh Yah. Eh, yeah, shara, eh, yeah, Yahweh Yah, or Yahweh Yah. Yahweh Yah, Yahweh. Yahweh, or Yahweh. Now he says, and I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, which are the patriarchs, by the name of God Almighty. So he appeared by the name of El Shaddai. So we have divine name revelation here, El Shaddai. But there's more in that name, and hopefully we'll get in a little bit more into El Shaddai, breaking that down Ethiopically, getting to the true Ethiopic and ancient etymology. But by my name Jehovah, so here it says by my name Jehovah or 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 Yod Hey Wow Hey or Yahweh Yahweh, was I not known to them? So he was the same one as Yahweh, but he was not known to them. It's like you may say, you know, I don't know all this Amharic and I like to learn it and everything, but um. Even though I say God, God still hears me because you have a spiritual relationship. That don't mean that you don't need to up, you know, you step up. You understand? But God still acknowledges you calling Him God instead of calling Him Elohe or or, or Amlake or, or or calling Him by His more proper name. So that's part of the grace or the mercy of Yah. Because I hear some folks saying, you know, I'll need to know Hebrew to communicate to God. That's prideful arrogance. You see, we're moving into a different time, as it's shown right here in the Bible, when Yahweh is saying to Moses, listen, I was known to your fathers by this name. I allowed that. I was called El Shaddai, God Almighty. I allowed that. It doesn't really mean almighty in that sense. It really means strong-breasted one. It's like an idea of a nurturer. Some could even see the maternal aspects of God in that particular name. And we'll touch on how the heathens totally confused that maternal aspect and that went into the goddess worship, similar to what we already have among black folks presently. We have a lot of diva worship. So we're back where we were even in that particular time in ancient times, religiously, theologically. Um, he says, okay, I was known by this name, but things are changing now. Because just remember, the Exodus signifies a change of dispensation, a, a, a change of an age. When great climatic, you understand, know great earth shaking events, climatic changes also occurred. And the Almighty, He manipulated, you understand, know Yahweh for us and on behalf of His Son, who we collectively are as the Beta Israel, as Israel. He manipulated these events 
to the benefit of those who heard the call of his chosen one, his Kherui, or his Horus, out of Egypt. I've called my son out of Egypt. Now that is a New Testament there's a New Testament link to that, too, where we get the name, um, um, the, the epiphany. Some call this the epiphany, which means the appearance. So we have this in Revelation as well. So we have a revelation. There's a revelation here of the divine, of the divine name. It says, and I have also established my covenant. Now, what's a covenant? What is the, remember, we're defining terminology. Because you said covenant is it's like a, you know, like you say you do this, I do that, that's a covenant. Yeah, but that's, no student, no disciple should have that, that um, general, because what's the point of you being a disciple? Who can you teach? You understand? Who can you disciple? How can you help ones when you don't know it yourself? And when you have not done it, in a sense, yourself. That means practice and perfect it. You understand? Know and get to know this. There's no resonance. There's no divine, there's no spirit in that sense if, if you choose that sort of way. But a covenant is a, is a, is a word agreement, is a word that covers certain actions. You know, one can call it a legal contract, so forth and so on. But the kal kidan bamarinya, the kal means word, and the kidan is something which covers. So that word agreement or word covering, we are covered under this word. It's like somebody says, well, well, um, y'all have to fix my car because here's the contract and I'm covered under that. There's a word and there's agreement to the word. I've done my part, you understand? I'm within the time frame or whatever the terms of it. So there are terms and there are conditions. People say that the love of God is unconditional. A lot of religious folks say this too. That's a lot. That's a lot. Because if, a, if, if, if from a Christian perspective, for example, all right, we know from a Hebrew perspective that's not so. He's merciful, he's gracious, but he wants you to grow up. So he accepts us as we are, but on the condition that we grow up. Not that we stay that way. You understand? Not that we, like, stay immature. You know, stay like little children. But he wants us to grow up to him in all things. And Christ is now that template, that, that, that heart and, and mind example. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, of the, of the, the Canaan land, the land of their pilgrimage. So what's a pilgrimage? We know the Muslims, they make pilgrimage to Mecca every year, you know, for their rites and rituals. The Catholics do it. Other religious groups do it. What is our pilgrimage, brothers and sisters? See, all of this now, if we were faithful to it, we wouldn't be in such a lost condition today. But there is hope. This is good news. You see, the good news is that we still can do it. Good news is that we still can pray on it, consider it, and get, you know, get prepared, get ready before it is too late. Wherein they were strangers. See, this is interesting. Because when we go to Africa as black people from America, they say the African don't accept you as African. The African don't accept you as African. I say, so what? I mean, it's not really hatred, but so what? You know, they got problems. You know, everybody got problems. But what does Yah say to us? What does Yah say to us? He says that that's the land of our pilgrimage. That's the land that we should be making pilgrimage to. You understand? We are strangers there. We'll be considered strange there because you're from America after 400 plus years. But the Ethiopians have a saying, Ya agariso, kashi ametu wadaristu. Ya agariso, a person who has an inheritance. Kashi um, ametu. After a thousand years, wadaristu, he may return to his inheritance even after a thousand years. Brothers and sisters and mothers, it has not been really that long, a thousand years in that sense, before we were, generally speaking, on the continent of Africa. You know what I'm saying? Now, a little more, but more than that, 
you know, now we go another thousand years, and then we more go back to 70 AD, and we see that more direct um, connection right there. And he goes on to say, and I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. I have remembered that word agreement that I gave to your forefathers. Because who was the first one? Abraham, right? Then we have Yitzhak, right? And then we have Yaakov, the Trinity. To those three, to our ancestors. Now, we're now at the time of Musa, several generations removed. And Yahweh is saying, Jah is saying, the word is still good. Are you ready? Are you getting prepared? Are you willing to make your wills obedient to good influences? It's the very same thing we're in. It hasn't even been as long from what Dr. Malaku Bayan and from the Federation, you know, Ethiopian Federation's Majesty's time to our present time. You see, and the reason why is because people are ignorant of this. They don't know, or they don't want to know. If they don't want to know, we'll forget them. You, you know, just let them go their way. Let them do their thing. But it could be friends, family, whatever. Let them, as long as they don't stand in our way. See, if they stand in our way, well, then there is conflict resolution, you know, because they are, you know, um, um, violating our freedom, our natanet that we have in the King of Kings and His Christ. Now it says in verse 6, Wherefore I say to the children of Israel, I am Yahweh, I am Jehovah, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. It's like right now. Are we under burdens? See now, you have to replace Egyptian for American. See, let me, let me give you a little revelation right here. You understand? Let me give you a little revelation right here. Look at this right here. Egyptians, right? Egyptians, right? That's Old Testament. That's Bible. In Revelation, that's being an American. You get it? You get it? All right? Egyptian, American. See, I want you to get, those who are willing to get this, I want you to get it. Those who are just wasting their time because they are they are dis disbelievers, kahadi, or you know just just you know those who those who who get this, I want you to get it. Egyptian, when you see Egyptian in this context, look at American. You see what I'm saying? So it says I have heard. It says I have heard voices. I have heard also heard the groanings of the children of Israel. If we have more room here, we will put. Um, children of Israel, Ethiopian, Hebrews, black folks in America and the Caribbean. All right? It says, I've heard the groanings of, also the groanings of the children of Israel, whom the, what? The Egyptians or the Americans? The Americans, right? Of course we know it's not as black Americans and have the black Americans in bondage. So even we have to understand clearer the context of Egyptian. Now, American can mean many things. Originally, American was that you came from England. You was Anglo-Saxon Protestant, white Anglo-Saxon. You was a wasp. You was white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, right? And the niggas who came over, they wasn't considered American. They were considered slaves and niggas. But after a period of time, even those niggas wanted to be down and they wanted to be American. So later on in the context of history, they become also, even though they were slaves, they didn't come over with the same rights and privileges and covenant as the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, but the, the blacks wanted to assimilate into the burning house, you know, the assimilate into the burning house. So they're called American. So when you look at Egyptians here, get off of that, that um, Charleston Heston whitewash and, and these fake Renaissance pictures thinking that the Egyptians you understand, was either all black or all one type. It was like being American. People are coming from uh, Europe and, 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 and Eastern Europe today in America, their first generation, and they call themselves American too, and they are basically quote, end quote. So when we say Egyptian, let's say quote, end quote. You understand, it wasn't the, the true rulers, the native rulers, but it was other people who had assimilated themselves took on the customs of Egypt and also rose up very high, but they hated those niggas called the Israelites, just like these people do even to this very day. 
So we have other people who are coming over to America even right now, and they don't care that black people are persecuted. They don't want to hear about slavery. They don't. They want. A, they want to achieve their own dreams at our expense. And the same thing is happening at this portion of um, scripture. So we have to be able to look at this from a 360 perspective. But he says he's going to bring us out from the burdens of the American, the debt. See that debt, that debt thing? They're blaming niggas for it. They're saying, yo, niggas, man, Obama is a welfare president. But wait, more white folks get welfare in America and in certain places where blacks are there, more white people are on welfare and food stamps. You see, but it's using us as the Israelites who were used as the blame, the blame game. You understand? Oh, we want the black kids to work as janitors. You know, that, that Gingrich, that note, note Gingrich, or as I and I assistant said, that Fig Newton. Fig Newton, he's talking about that right now. You know, that's what Fig Newton is dealing with. So he's making, just like the, just like the Egyptians were doing in that time, they had to blame some group. So they decided we'll blame the Israelite group for the problems we're having now. Just like right now, because they have a black president, because we had Joseph, because we got Obama in that sense. Not saying Obama is a Joseph, but understanding the spiritual archetype. You see, you have to be able to understand the spiritual resonance, you know, or the principle, the mechanics of it. Not literally this is the redo, you understand, but certain principles are being repeated. You know what I mean? There's a certain pattern to this matrix. And I will rid you out of their bondage. Believe it or not, like it or not, we still are in bondage. I heard something on TV, I think it was PBS, there's some nigga, I could tell you it was a nigga, he's a nigga, nigga, as a nigga, as a nigga can be. This nigga said, um, riches is, wealth is not the opposite of poverty, or riches and wealth is not the opposite of poverty. Justice is. I'm like, these niggas are stupid. <laughs> the opposite of poverty, right, is not being poor or being rich. You understand? Or being wealthy or having resources, in other words. You know, it's rich and poor. You know, rich, rich and poor. But now niggas are so confused. This is a spiritual Egypt and so much madness that they're telling black folks, listen, being rich or wealthy is not the opposite of being poor. It's justice. You need justice. The only justice we're going to get is from job. You understand? That's the only justice. And see, we're in a time where, where justice is on Jah's mind. He says, and I will redeem you. Redeem you. I will buy you back. I will purchase you. So that means that they were sold into something. Just like we have been sold into something. With a stretched out arm. With a stretched out arm. And with what kind of judgments? Great judgments. Whether you like it or not. Great judgments have to. They must. If there is a true God in heaven and on earth, you understand, who rules all, then this must happen. And this is what we are seeing in the whole 2012 thing. We're seeing great judgments are coming on America. A lot of folks don't want you to talk about it, don't want to think. They said slavery is a long time ago, and that's all done, and now niggas just need to get a job and work. As though every, all the conditions that helped to form slavery and form this system have just disappeared. No, there's great judgment. There was a time for repentance. There was a time for working that out, you know, for the last 40 years. That was the time to, you know, for, for the new white man to stand up. But we see that the new white man basically is the same old white man, except he's smiling more. You know what I mean? It was a new white supremacy. It's the same thing. So when we talk about new world order, the only type of new world order most of you can think about is a new world order where, where white supremacy, white folks are running everything. That's because you lack the raid. You lack the vision. Do you lack the vision? Because you are American or trying to live like an Egyptian, but actually you do want the children of Israel. But you're blind. You see, because you, you can't see the vision. And this is why when you look at the state of black, so-called African nigger America, we're in a situation where we're perishing. Yeah, a couple of niggas made it. Yeah, Beyonce and Jay-Z, they had a baby. All right, so what? <laughs> 
You see, but ones are being so much distracted by that and think those are the real issues while there is great judgment on the horizon, on the horizon. There's great judgment on the horizon. You see, but most folks are trying to act like, you know, like, you know, trying to ignore the, the, the obvious. Now, think about this for a moment. There must have been other peoples in Egypt. There must have been all kind of other people. We know there were other nationalities and groups in Egypt, right, besides the Israelites. Why is this all about the Israelites? Mm -hmm. I ask that question because there's some folks that say, well, it's not just black people. It's, you know, there's a lot of other kind of people and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. But... That's who John's concerned about. John's concerned about us. And it seems like niggas nowadays, when they talk about an issue, it's like now we talk about civil rights. It's no longer about black folks. It's about everybody. It's about gay people. It's about, it's about people. Martians can get civil It's about every kind of thing. For animals need civil rights. You know, everybody needs their civil rights. You see what I'm saying? But John cares about his people. Mm. And when you recognize that nobody else has, it's like His Majesty's care for us as a people. When you recognize nobody else has, you know, it's, it's, it's immensely comforting. You know what I mean? It's immensely reassuring. And it should be inspirational enough for us to get our acts together because He first loved us. You, you see, so we should be able to get over all this hate, all this hate of Him and of our brother and sister and mother and, and, and neighbor in Jah Rastafari. And I will take you to me for a people. It sounds like Revelation. You ever read Revelation where he says, I will be their God, I will be, I will be, you know, they will be my people, I will be their God, he will be in the midst, we will be one. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh or Jehovah your God, your Elohim, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. See, the burdens of the Egyptians are like the burdens of the Americans. The economy now is our burden, too. Uh -huh. They're saying that all of y'all as Americans, your children and your children's children are in debt to some bankers, are in debt to somebody. Y'all in debt. Y'all born. When a child is born, they inherit a debt. That's a burden. That's the burden of the Egyptians, like the burden of the Americans. We are under the, their burden. But check out how ironic this, this, this trip is. We're under the burden of the Americans, right? They brought us over here as slaves, never paid us nothing, no 40 acres, no mule, no, nothing. You know what I mean? We had to do everything for ourselves, basically, you know, from the time that we basically got over here until this present time right now. And they still are playing the blame game. Even this whole politics trip and Obama, blah, 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 so forth, Gingrich, the Sig Newton, and, and, and Romney, the Mormon, and so forth and so on, right? All those are games. But still, a lot of you are so blind because you lack the ra'i, you lack the vision, you lack the revelation. Now, here at the 14th, Sabbatical reading and feeding is some very interesting correspondence, and it's unfortunate your pastors and preachers should have been telling you of this already. If the pastors and preachers had even preached one tenth of this, some of you all would be more prepared for what is to come. Verse 8 And I will bring you into the land concerning which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it to you for an heritage. I am Jah, I am Jehovah, I am the Lord. Now, this right here is a constitution and bond laws from the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. I know there's a lot of talk out there, and a lot of people are slandering my name and my wife's name and all the brothers and sisters of this society. So if you go out there, you'll find some nonsense, but there's no evidence of anything besides that they are haters and their hatred. You understand for those who sought to do good and to bring things into prophetic alignment because they are not, you know, when Christ said to some of the Jews, and we say Christ is black, and man, those Jews were black too. He said to niggas, black folks, he says, um, you, Abraham is not your father. 
Because if Abraham was your father, you would love I and I. But because Abraham is not your father, you seek to kill I and I. You seek to persecute I and I. But watch out. The thing that you want to happen to I and I not happen to the I then. You know, so, so think about these things carefully. But the preamble of the Constitution says this right here. It says, let's see if you can see this right here. It says, we, the black peoples of the world, in order to affect liberty, solidarity, uh, to affect, excuse me, unity, solidarity, liberty, freedom, and self-determination, to secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage. You see that right there? Which is our divine heritage. That's the key right there, this word right here, these three words, our divine heritage. You see that? Which is our divine heritage. Do hereby establish and ordain this constitution for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Now, speaking of the Federation, the Federation is a witness. This is a witness of what we're reading here in reality for us. So that land, oh, this word here, this word here, organization, present organization or not, is still a faithful and a true word of our God Father and our King of Kings, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, in the name of Jesus Christos, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this is our divine heritage. So the reason why more productive you understand, more progressive hasn't happened with this in many long years is because of the lack of knowledge. You see, the lack of knowledge, and therefore, if you don't have the knowledge, you, you don't even have the ability to do it because you don't know what you should be doing. You just do, 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 do. You're only dealing with the doo-doo. So that's why there's so much of that that you might encounter presently, though there are some brothers and sisters who really know what this is about, are seeking to get their spiritual heads and hearts in their house in order. And we give thanks for you all. And um, link with I and I, you know, if the Spirit is so willing. Now it says in verse 9, it says, And Moses spake so, he spoke so, you know, he spoke in Dihu, like this, to the children of Israel, to the Bane Yisrael. Israel. But they hearkened not. Whoa, let's bring this again. So this is how the real Moses, you know, and this is how his majesty spoke to us. But did the people, the Negroes, the niggers, the lost sheep in America here, thus once again hear our brother, the heights, where you said that, that Bob Marley told us, how the Slassy told us, Jesus told us, there ain't no Savior coming because you ain't prepared and because many of y'all ain't wanting to get prepared. You don't want to make your wills obedient to good influence and we're to warn you and tell you that a sudden judgment and destruction is coming. You understand? For those who are not preparing to be the Terufan, the black survivors. You understand? But firstly and foremostly is our divine heritage. Remember, this is chiefly spiritual power is the first power that we need to get our heads and our hearts to overcome these curses. You see, no amount of social programs are going to do it unless they are based, grounded, and founded on the firm foundation of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Plainly and simply. This is why it hasn't worked. I mean, we look at the black organizations that have worked, whether even the Elijah Muhammad's Nation of Islam, call it what you will, you understand? Those black folks really showed and proved that even coming from the gutter, we could not only stand on the sidewalk, but we could own the sidewalk. That was a fourth tasting of what, and we could do that in America. Imagine what we can do in our land of promise. See, you have to begin to imagine it. You have to begin to envision it. The vi You understand? You have to begin to imagine it and envision it. You understand that? They even tell you this in a lot of um, self-help programs. You first have to be able to you know, envision where you want to be in the future. You have to think about it. You have to, you know, you have to create, you know, create a, 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 a vision. You know, the vision has to be in head and heart. And because many don't have that vision, when they look at Africa, they look at Ethiopia, they look at where we're at right now, they become very discouraged. 
you understand, they become very discouraged and not encouraged. And we hope that this will begin to encourage our people within the time that we have. And Moses, so we can, as it says, um, redeem the time because the days are extremely kufl or evil. So Musa, he spake so to the children of Israel, but they hearkened. They didn't hear. They don't want to hear this. You don't want to hear that shit about Africa. I don't hear that, man. You know, it's not making papers. Papers. And what do we get for the papers? Less, you know what I mean? Less and less as time goes on. But they hearken not to Musa for anguish of spirit. You see, they didn't listen to Moses because they said, we're going through so much already. You tell us about some promised land, some, some land that God, you know, one of the, the God of our forefathers want to give us, but don't you see what we're going through right now? Don't you see how difficult it is, man? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to make it. You know, I'm just trying to, I'm, just, I'm trying to get by, man. So this is what they were saying. So for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. It's not discounting that what the children of Israel, it wasn't just because, because, but it was because it was going through so much difficulty already, trying to so-called make ends meet, trying to pay the rent, trying to have enough food, trying to send the children to school, and, and trying to keep the families. Can you imagine how many families were broken up, just like among I and I? How many families were blaming each other while they were in a, a there's a big picture. You see, there's a big picture that they were missing, and many of us are missing that big picture of it. And this is what's dividing the people and making it so seemingly impossible, so for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. And Yahweh spake to Musa, saying, go in, speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He's saying, like, listen, you're going to have to go and deal with not just the White House, not just the federal government, but go and check that king. Check the king of Egypt. Do we have to check Obama? You know what I'm saying? Will we have to check Sig Newton or Mitt Romney or, or that Ron Paul guy? You know what I'm saying? He says, go in to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that he let, that he allow the children of Israel go out of his land. You know what I'm saying? In other words, that he helps, because the people probably couldn't do it themselves. They were just trying to deal with their day-to-day. -day. So now... Moses, as the representative, had to go and speak to the king of Egypt on behalf of his people. And Moses spake before the Lord, before Yahweh, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened to me. They're not listening. You know, we're posting these videos trying to teach us. Another brother who had a, had a video that we saw, and he said he just did this just to show that people are more into the negative stuff. Like, I think he said, the niggas got to die or something like that. And we, we clicked on it, too. And he says, you know, most people do when he's trying to teach stuff. And when people try to teach positive stuff to black folks, black folks don't want to know about that. When he's trying to rally our, our numerical and, 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 and our people together behind some of the unjust incarcerations and imprisonments, of a lot of brothers and sisters out there, you barely can get people to sign a petition. Like, we put up a petition on our website. How many of y'all have signed that petition? Really, how many of y'all who agree with it? The ones that don't agree, you know, why waste your time? You understand? But if you agree with it, how many have signed it? So it shows that people are more inclined to negativity because that's part of the, the preconditioning. You know, in, in, in the psychological, the mind control and stuff, that's part of the preconditioning. There's a precondition. You know, as if you have some preconditions. So there's some preconditions that we have, and we're saying there's only that spiritual power and authority and authorization that even gives us the possibility of overcoming those preconditions. Because behind those preconditions are demonic forces. There are demonic forces put behind all of these evil men and people systems. So we need the spiritual power and authority as we confront and go up against these various these various shit systems, you understand, to come out of Babylon before it is too late. So it says, How shall Pharaoh hear me who am un of un uncertain?